Welcome to the fifth lesson in a series of videos on the basics of job order cost accounting. This video is about the summary of cost flows or basically the summary of everything we've discussed in the previous videos. So if you haven't seen the previous videos yet, you can find them in the links in the description below. Um, I highly recommend you watch them before you watch this one because this one is an overview of everything we've discussed. So you might not understand some concepts anymore because I've already discussed them in the past videos. So again, you can check them out on the links in the description below. And let's get started on this one. So now we know how materials flow, um, labor cost flows, and overhead cost flows, which basically constitute all the costs of a job. So let's say we're given all this data for a certain month. Yes, that's a lot of data, but we're going to get through it. Let's take this one. What is this? This is our direct material costs for per job. Meaning for job 1, we spent $150. For job 2, we spent $200 and so forth. Next, this one is our direct labor costs. Meaning for job 3, we spent $500. For job 4, we spent $600 on direct labor. And here is the total direct labor we used for all our jobs, which is $4,400. And here, by the way, is the total direct material we spent on all the jobs, which is $1,150. And now, according to our problem here, our allocation base is direct labor, which is this one. And our predetermined overhead rate is 1.6, meaning whatever our direct labor is, we multiply it by 1.6 to allocate overhead like we discussed in the previous video on overhead. We allocate overhead by applying a POHR on our allocation base. So in this case, our direct labor cost for job one is 1,000. So $1,000 times 1 1.6, that's equal to $1,600. For job five, that's $300 multiplied by 1.6, we get $480 and so forth. So that's basically the primary stuff that's been used in our jobs. These are all the direct costs we can associate with the jobs, including our allocated costs in overhead. Now, if you remember, these allocated costs are not actually the cost we incurred in each job. But then the problem is we cannot allocate our overhead costs because we don't know which jobs they're allocated to. So as you can see in the bottom, these are actually our actual overhead costs. So for indirect materials, we spent $870. For indirect labor, we spent $1,100. And for every other overhead cost, let's say utilities, supplies, factory depreciation, we spent $5,070. So the total of which is $7,040, which is our incurred overhead. And it happens to be that our allocated overhead, which is also $7,040, is equal to our incurred overhead. Now, it's not always the case that our allocated overhead will be equal to our incurred overhead. What if our POHR was 1.7? So clearly, this would be higher, right? So it would be different. So then you may ask, how will we balance them? So for now, we won't discuss that. That will be discussed in the next video, which is our last one. It will be about adjusting factory overhead. For now, let's take into account this simple problem wherein we actually have the same allocated overhead and the same incurred overhead, okay? So this one is our total. This is our total material costs, 1,150 plus 870 in indirect plus the direct, it's 2,020. For our labor costs, our direct labor is 4,400 and our indirect labor is 1,100, that's 5,500. And for the overhead, that's 870 plus 1,100 plus 5,070, that's 7,050. So now, um, to find out how much did we spend on materials purchased, we basically have all this data that will be given to us. So our cost used in production plus our ending materials inventory would give us the materials available. And our materials available minus our beginning materials inventory would be giving us materials purchased like we've learned in past lessons. So that's how you get materials purchased. Okay, and how about this one? What is all of this? What's all this? What's all this? So basically, these numbers is the total cost of each job. So you can see in job 5, 100 plus 300 plus 480, that will give you $880. For job 3, 400 plus 500 plus 800 gives you $1,700. 
And you may ask, why are they in different places? Why is job 4 and 5 in goods and process? Why is job 3 in finished goods? And why is job 1 and 2 in cost of goods sold? Well, this is because job 1 and 2 has already been sold. Job 3 has already been finished being manufactured. And job 4 and 5 is still being manufactured. That's why it's still in goods and process. And if you remember in the past lesson, if you remember in the past lesson, our job cost sheet travels from the goods and process inventory to the finished goods inventory and the cost of goods sold, depending on where it is on the production line. If it's already been made, done being made, but haven't been sold, or it's still being made, or it's already been sold. So it's either of those three. And going back, so this is what you get, no? this is what you end up with. So now let's try to put them all in a ledger. So first, we have to take into account how many materials we purchased. So in this case, as you can see, we purchased 2,420 worth of materials, meaning we debit raw materials inventory by 2,420, and we credit accounts payable or cash, depending on what we use, by 2,422. So that's how much we purchased. So we put in, we add onto our inventory because we got more inventory by purchasing, right? And next, we know that 1,150 worth of materials were used directly in jobs, meaning we know where we directly assign them to. So this means we credit raw materials inventory because we take them away and we put them in jobs and we debit the goods in process inventory of each job. Now in this example, I'm going to put them in one general account called goods in process inventory because um, it would be too long if I put it per job, but in in specific situations, we have to put it in goods in process inventory job 1 for 150, goods in process inventory for job 2, and so forth. But for now, we're going to put it in one account to make things simpler. Okay, next, we know that we spent $870 in indirect materials. Meaning, we don't know where they were spent to, but we know they were spent. We don't know which job they were assigned to, but we know they were spent within the factory or the workplace. And in this case, since it's indirect, we assign it to the factory overhead ledger. So we take away from our raw materials inventory and we put it into our factory overhead because for now, we still don't know how much is assigned for each job. So we put it into the factory overhead and let it stay there for now. Okay, next, let's look at our labor. We spent $4,400 in direct labor and we spent $1,100 in indirect labor. Meaning, total, we spent 5500 on our labor. So what we do is we paid our labor force 5500 in cash, and we debit it into factory payroll because that is an expense. We credit cash because it's an asset account. We take away cash, and we put it into our factory payroll, which is an expense account. That's why we debit it. And now we can see that our direct labor costs are 4400 Therefore, we credit factory payroll and we debit goods in process inventory per job and again i made it into a general account so we don't have to do it per job but in real situations we have to differentiate per job so as you can see we transferred four thousand four hundred dollars worth of costs from the factory payroll which we just assigned here and we transferred it to the goods in process inventory of each job which is this one job one is one thousand job two two thousand and so forth and now we know that we have a remaining 1,100 in indirect labor. And again, just like indirect material, since we don't know which jobs it's assigned to yet, we put it in the account factory overhead. So we transfer. Again, we transfer the costs from the factory payroll by crediting it, and we transfer it to our factory overhead. Because for now, we don't know where it is assigned. So now if you can see our factory payroll, it's equal to zero because we already assigned all our factory payroll expenses to our direct labor or our jobs, in this case, the 4,400 into the five jobs. And we already assigned the overhead or the indirect labor into our factory overhead account. Okay. Next, we know that we spent 5,070 in other overhead, meaning utilities, supplies, we spent cash to pay off our bills, our factory depreciation. We all spent it there to our overhead. So these are other overheads. And we credit cash because, of course, we let go of cash to pay it. And we debit factory overhead because that is an expense account. 
And then next is that we apply our overhead using our allocation base. So in this case, we know that our allocation base is our direct labor. And our POHR is 1.6. So $4,400 multiplied by 1.6 will give you 7,040. Okay, so that 7,040 now will be debited to our goods and process inventory because we are now allocating the cost to our individual jobs. And again, in this case, I didn't make it individual, but this is um, taking into account all the five jobs. So we're transferring, we're allocating the overhead to our jobs. And to do that, we credit factory overhead, meaning we take away the cost and we transfer now the cost to our specific jobs or to our goods in process inventory. Now, you have to remember that we did not take this 7,040 from here. We did not. It just so happens that these two are equal. And I will show you later what will happen if they are not equal. So we took it away from multiplying our allocation base of direct labor to our POHR of 1.6. We did not get it from our incurred cost. We look at it later. This is something we look at later. And we will show it in the next video. Okay, so moving forward. After that, we see that 9,850 of goods in process was transferred to our finished goods where so it's basically these these two these two were finished so we transferred them to our finished goods and the second and the first two jobs which were sold we transferred them from the finished goods inventory they were here and we transferred them to the cost of goods sold so we debit finished goods inventory we credit goods in process inventory because we take away from the goods in process inventory and we put it in the finished goods inventory and same with cost of goods sold, we credit finished goods inventory because it's already been sold, so it's not in our inventory anymore. And we transfer it to our expense account, which is cost of goods sold because they are the cost of the goods we have sold. So basically, this is the rundown of the entire process of figuring this entire thing out. Again, you start by taking into account your purchases and materials, then you start assigning these into their respective account, depending if they're direct or indirect. Then you take into account your what you paid for your payroll, and then this payroll, you also assign it to your goods in process or your factory overhead, depending if that's direct or indirect labor. And next, you apply your other factory overhead costs your supplies, your utilities, you put them in your factory overhead account too. And then you allocate your factory overhead using your POHR and your allocation base to your goods in process inventory or to your specific jobs. Now you allocate. So this happens to be equal with how much you actually incurred. And that's a good thing, meaning you don't have to adjust anything. But as you will see in the last video, there are times where what you incurred is not actually equal to your allocated overhead and if you want to know more about that you can click on the next video in the description below and lastly you transfer so if you have jobs that has been finished or jobs that have been sold you transfer them from their goods in process to their finished goods or you transfer them from finished goods to cost of goods sold depending on where they are at at the process are they done are they still being made or are they have they been sold so that's basically the overview of the cost flows and how they look like in the general picture when you put them all together. So just remember that what you're doing is you're just transferring costs around. So when you buy materials, you put them in your inventory. And when you know that you've assigned a certain amount to a certain job, you transfer it to that account. So it's all about transferring costs and knowing where they go. And again, that's the essence of job cost accounting is to know where they go. And for the last video, we're going to talk about what happens if these two are not equal? What if our incurred cost is actually 8,000 and we allocated only 7,040? What will we do? So this is where adjusting your overhead comes in. And we will see that in the next video, which you can find in the link in the description below. So until then, in our last video, I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.